everybody. Welcome to a weird and strange, I know, weird and strange episode of the Laugh and Be Blessed podcast. I'm your raspy and kind of uh, sexy, sultry fella tonight. I'm your host, Jake Rubel, and with me, as always, is my beautiful, beautiful, wonderful, amazing wife, Chia. Was I muted? You're, it's not even, you're not even holding it up to you. What about that? I mean, that's a little bit. Look well, how I'm doing it. today. Look how I'm what? doing it. Okay, hold on. Let me sit up. Also, it's turned around backwards. Oh. <laughs> well, look at that. Hold on. Yeah, that's so much better. How about that? Yeah, that's fine. Well, you acted like you could hear me when we did our little mic check. And then so. you flipped it around. I didn't flip it around. I didn't you also it. had it up against your face <laughs> hole. <laughs> <clears throat> so as you can tell, my voice is shot. It is, <laughs> it's rough. I don't know what is going on with it. Uh, I I came off the stage last weekend. I got off stage at the Donnie Baker show, and I felt, <coughs> excuse me, I felt my voice going, uh, like, as soon as I stepped off the stage. Everything sounded fine, and then as soon as I was stepping off the stage, like, I'm going to go back and listen to the audio of this and just <laughs> laugh. I know I sound ridiculous. No, you'll, you'll hear what I've I heard sound like an old, <laughs> I feel like I sound like one of those old, like, cool rock DJs. Like, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to 97.4 <laughs> The Meadow, where we, the only, meadow. <laughs> where we only play that hippie rock. <laughs> oh my word so i don't know how long i'm gonna be able to do this podcast tonight because <laughs> as you can tell <laughs> like i laugh and it sounds like i'm coughing like it's <laughs> it's so bad it is so bad but i got off the stage at the donnie baker show and my voice was just it was it, yeah it was just going um <clears throat> And then we went to, yeah, (laughs) and then we went camping all week and (laughs) my voice was like back and forth all week. Like one day would be fine. And then the next day it'd go out again because my allergies are acting up. So it's like, and we have a pop up camper, which is great, but it's more like staying in a tent. (coughs) So you had to deal with like the moisture. It wasn't hot. Like we thought it'd be either. So it wasn't. It's just cool, and normally would have been great for camping, yeah. but I don't think it was great for resting well, and your then, voice. And then today and I had a show. <laughs> yeah, I never stopped talking. <laughs> That's what it is. My voice is finally like, dude, give me a little bit of a break. Put a rest, I man. had a show tonight I was supposed to host, and I was worried my voice was going to go out again, and it sounded fine like all day. Everything was good. And I got up on the mic and was I could feel it. And I ended up having a friend of mine, Griffin Shira. Thank you, Griffin, for jumping in and hosting the show for me. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, let, let's just talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about some shows. Okay. <laughs> some shows. If I talk like this, I think my voice will be fine. <laughs> it will not cut out. Some shows. Mark your calendars. Jake could be coming to a town near you. So also, uh, we should probably just say we apologize about no, we did not record a podcast last week. Yeah, we suck. I'm sorry. Um, Yeah, that's why I was like, I don't care what my voice sounds like. We're just going to go ahead and do this thing. We totally thought about it while we were camping. We thought about you guys. Well, but my voice was starting to go out then, and it was really, really bad then. Like now it's kind of going in and out, but it was so bad then that I just did not think it was going to work. So um, I like the sling blade accent. You like what? The sling, sling blade, blade accent? accent? We'll get into that in just a second <laughs> whenever we talk about the camping trip because that was pretty funny. So um, just real quick, I want to say I did a couple shows uh, at Gaddy's Comedy Club a couple weeks ago. And uh, I don't know if we talked about that or not, but it was uh, I had a lot of fun at those. So it, I think I mean, we, we probably did. Um, I did a show in Linton, Indiana at the Moose Lodge with Rob Wilfong and mm-hmm. uh, Tony... Gordon Brock, and those were surprisingly amazing. Of those, that show, yeah, uh, because it's in Linton, Indiana. Yeah, you, uh, which I don't know. I know it's small, but I always think it's way smaller yeah, than what it is. Yeah, it's it's bigger than what I thought it was. But it was just like you don't think, and they kept coming up to us, and there was like one guy there that just kept going, "We don't get stuff like this here," <laughs> so he was like really happy. But Rob Wilfong puts on a great show. 
Yeah. Like it just ended up being fantastic. I had so much fun. And Rob's hilarious. Tony was super fun. I sold a lot of t shirts, uh, which was good. That means that people are out there supporting the podcast and, uh, you know, repping those laugh and be blessed tie dye shirts. I do make my own tie dye shirts now. So with my own hands. Uh, Chia, and I help. Chia helps a lot, and the kids even chipped in a little bit. So um, that Linton show was really, really fun. I had a blast. And then the next night, I went to Evansville, Indiana, and I opened up for Donnie Baker again. <clears throat> and I just want to give a shout out to Mad Hatters uh, shows. They do some great shows. They really know what they're doing. Um, John Payne and Neil Snyder are great guys they uh, put on just a great show i really have fun doing those so uh it was in evansville i think there was like 400 450 people there or something like that in the in this bar which is like crazy for a bar show to have that many people but um it was fantastic i had so much fun a couple of my friends seth and lake and white went down there with me to help me sell t-shirts and uh, that was my excuse just to kind of get them to come down and hang out but uh <laughs> But yeah, we had so much fun. Like it was just a blast. Donnie is always uh, great to work with. I love working with him. He is the nicest guy in the world. He's super funny. So um, I really, really love those. And then tonight, uh, I had a show at Hoppy Wobbles. It was our first laugh and be blessed comedy show, and it was Tyson Cox, uh, Patrick Murray. Jan Gaditis, and then Griffin Shira actually stepped up and hosted since my voice sounds like this. <clears throat> and I'm sure people are going to be like, I'm not listening to the rest of this episode because this guy's voice. <laughs> or people are like, man, he sounds so good. Uh, either way. Either way. Either, either way is fine. Either, either, either way is good. So, um, and that was, a, we had a really good turnout. We had uh, a bunch of fun. We're doing our next show at Hobby Wobbles in Bloomington. We're going to do it the last Sunday of this month uh, of July, which uh, I'll get into some shows that I have coming up, and we'll talk about that one. So uh, July 2nd and 3rd, which is going to be this Friday and Saturday, I'm going to be at Getty's Comedy Club again with uh, mm -hmm. Andy, Andy Benigno, Benigno is the headliner, who's a very good friend of mine. He's very, very funny. He's got a dry bar comedy special. He's on Bob and Tom all the time. He is hilarious. Uh, you don't want to miss. If you've been thinking like, oh, man, I should probably go to one of these shows at Gutty's, go to this one. I mean, it's going to be a holiday weekend, so it's going to be fun. Get out, do something, um, and, and check Andy out. So uh, it's in the Greenwood Mall, and Griffin Shira will also be on the show. And I love Griffin. He He's funny and very good looking. Uh, which isn't weird for me to say at all. And then uh, John Molehill will <laughs> also be, be weird. I don't know. It, it would be weird if it wasn't true, I guess. <clears throat> John Molehill will be hosting the show, and John is a very nice guy. Uh, I've only seen him do comedy a couple times, but he's made me laugh, and that's good. You know, I think so, that's the reason for doing it. I believe so. So that is going to be the 2nd, 3rd of July. I will be there. And then um, on the 25th, I think yeah, I think that's the next one. Uh, oh, this Wednesday actually, I forgot. Yeah. Uh, this Wednesday, which is June thirtieth, I will be at the Comedy Caravan in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. I'll be down there. So <clears throat> if you're around Louisville, come out and see me. I'll be there. And then the twenty fifth of July, I will be back at Hobby Wobbles Pub in Bloomington. Um, the headliner is going to be Adam Couch. Uh, who's a local comedian. He's a great guy. He's very funny. He's a used car salesman now, I think. <laughs> Actually, Is I think, he? I think he says new cars now. But, uh, oh. yeah, he's got a mullet, and uh, he loves baseball, I believe. So, you know, he's got it there all going. Go. So Adam Couch is going to be on that show. Uh, also, we have um, Grant Volkmar will be the feature for the show, and we're big fans of Grant Volkmar on the show. He's going to be the feature. I don't know who the guest spot is going to be just yet. And then I will most likely be hosting, so as long as I have a voice back by then. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that is going to be the 25th of July. Uh, more dates are coming, So, but that's what's going on right now. Um, Keep your ear holes open. Yeah, so uh, the... <coughs> Sorry, I'm going to do that <coughs> a couple of times because my voice is... It's like a, I don't feel like I have to cough, but I feel like if I cough, it'll make my voice better. And then it just doesn't, so it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. um, so we went up to... Uh, Jasmine had church camp this week, mm -hmm. right? This past week, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Why don't you talk Why? about it for a second? Okay. So, <coughs> we're uh, the church we go to is a part of a pretty large organization, and Indiana has their own 
campgrounds and I I went to the campgrounds from the time I was eight till like fifteen. And then Jasmine started going when she was eight. <coughs> so uh two of the years in a row I was a counselor and Holden's been a camper twice, but the the boys really don't like the feel of being in the dorms because you gotta stick to a schedule and who wants to do that, right? <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, the us first rubles <laughs> are not known for like waking up at a normal time. <laughs> the first or being woke up by people. Yeah. <laughs> so the first two years I was a supervisor, and that was super fun. The third year Jasmine went and Holden went. Um, I don't really like my kids being too far away without me laying eyes on them. And the campground's like an hour and a half away. It's Monday through Friday, so I was in nursing school at the time. So every single day I drove up. And uh, after class, and I'd drive back down and then go to class the next day for five days in a row. And then the very next week when Holden went, I did the same thing. So this year, I was a little nervous. I thought they'd all want to be campers. Turns out only Jasmine wanted to be one. So we worked it out to where they also have a family area where you can have your RVs and stuff like that. Some people have cottages up there. So Jasmine was up front in the dorms, and the boys still got to go to camp because they just stayed in the pop-up camper with us. And luckily, we were kind of diagonal from some friends of ours whose son's the same age as our son's. So we had a we had a good time. It was really nice. Yeah. It was kind of crazy because we were taking a nap in the camper one day, and the boys were out playing, and they would just go off on their bikes with their friend and go to the front where all the the actual campers were and there's playground and cafeteria and all kinds of kids up there and i told jake i said man this must have been what it was like back when people don't worry so much about their kids running around in town and stuff yeah because it's almost like at the little village there like people patrol it there's people on golf carts driving around the whole time like keeping around kids and everything so yeah it was a pretty cool feeling and and like i said i've been going to these you know campgrounds since i was eight years old you know, I had older sisters who went before me, and I've, I mean, unless they're real good about keeping things hush-hush, I've never heard of anything awful happening. Yeah. And it was, it was just a nice little community time. They have uh, services every single night. I went to all of them. Jake went to a couple. Yeah, and they were good. I mean, I think anyone who listens to the show knows by now, like, I'm, I'm not, like, against religion i'm not right. against uh, it was just something that i couldn't like participate in wholly anymore yeah uh, with a wh uh, <laughs> or an h either way like i couldn't so you know and that same, was same for me i really <clears throat> i i enjoy going to church and i enjoy uh spirituality in all aspects yeah um, well I then that's the thing is like we're open-minded involved. about it yeah. so like it's and and here's the thing too is like <clears throat> you know, we're at a, a a Pentecostal campground. Like everyone there's Pentecostal. Mm-hmm. Everybody there you know, looks some, Pentecostal. Some people don't know what that is. Pentecostal? Yeah. Uh so apostolic Pentecostal is basically and, and and I hate generalizing things, but I think I'm safe to generalize this. Mm-hmm. Women wear skirts, women have long hair. For the most part, men have very short hair, are clean shaven, um, dress very nice. Mm-hmm. You know, like they just uh, yeah. Well, you have a uh, more strict uh, what we standards. would call it, like holy standards. Um, little to no, um, even though you dress nicely, little to no uh, adorning yourself. Yeah, uh, like speaking no of makeup, no makeup, jewelry, jewelry stuff, stuff like, like that. that. Um, and <clears throat> so just to kind of give some people yeah. an overview, because so, I wear I wear a skirt <coughs> at work, and people often ask me if I'm Amish or Mennonite right. and they don't know what Pentecost is. So. Got you. Okay, yeah, so I didn't even think so about that really. put things in perspective. So, uh, so that's like, you know, what I came out of. I was a Pentecostal preacher for, uh, you know, a few years <clears throat> and left that and started doing stand-up comedy. And now I look like I do. And if you don't know what I look like, uh, anyone who listens to the show, uh, feel free to go to my Instagram or Facebook. Mm-hmm. I don't look like I'm Pentecostal at all. Yeah, I have the long hair of a woman, um, <laughs> <laughs> and and the beard of a Sasquatch. Um, <laughs> but that's the thing is like <clears throat> all these people are walking around, you know, and he was, in their in their like in their safest of environments. Yeah, like this is their place. Yeah, and then there's just this chubby yeti. <laughs> In a tie dye shirt, you, just like stumbling around the grounds, just smiling and waving, just like, hey, how you doing? Like, at one point, this golf cart full of teenagers drove by, 
and it was like the first time I was walking up to service whenever he like first got there and this golf cart drove by and I heard one of the girls in the back uh, she pointed right at me and she goes get a load of this guy <laughs> and like they all just started laughing and I was like alright here we go Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but here's the thing it was like it, I, I'm not upset well, because the thing like is, is it, it is like they don't expect to see some yeah. someone like me just roaming around, and also none of them knew me. Like right, well that's what I was going to say. What's funny is like he's getting strange looks from some of the kids. Some compliments on your great beard. Yeah, there was this one uh, kid that multiple times came up to me and he goes, "Sir, sir, sir." I love your mustache and beard. <laughs> and I was like, thanks. Most people just lump it yeah. all in together, but it's okay that you separated it. But, you know, in previous years, me being a counselor <clears throat> there, and we were heavily involved in our Sunday school program at our church. Um, and this is all of the Indiana uh, churches for our organization getting together. Um, but, you know, we, we all get together multiple times throughout the year for different things. So, again, he's getting a strange look from the kids. And then there's all these higher ups, like pastors, uh, Sunday school directors, and everything oh, the, running like the up people, and hugging him. Yeah. Hey, like, brother, how have you been? Yeah. And I know the kids are like, they know that guy. Yeah, like the people, <laughs> the people that like run the campgrounds are yeah. like coming up to me and hugging me because those are my friends. You know, yeah. like I love those people. And that, but I want to just, you know, I, I do want to say like that was really a good moment for me mm -hmm. because yeah. since I have left, you know the religion yeah it, the religious aspect it, of it yes. you know the the worst part of it was mm -hmm. feeling like and i've talked about it before like feeling like i let friends down yeah people that really care about me and not just like letting them down but <clears throat> also uh, hoping i didn't cause a rift between us like right. I, I didn't want to put a wedge between us because right. it, honestly everything that was going on with me had nothing to do with them mm -hmm. but like everybody was you know, for the most part, everybody was so great, and it wasn't like a fake nice. No, like I can tell because I've seen some people that I do, I used to go to church with, or they used to see me around, mm -hmm. that will come up to me and they're nice, but I can tell they're they they're uncomfortable. Like yeah. they don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. They're being very. Um, they're just not being personable with me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, we have a history. We have a relationship. Like, why would you, yeah. like, don't treat me just like that. But also, I'm not mad at him. I'm the one yeah. who did this. Yeah. I'm the one who did it. So this, it's like, I'm not upset. This but all goes back to, like, the whole conversation about self-validation and being validated by others. Yeah. You know, we're worried. We were worried when we stepped down those rules that we were hurting s certain people that we get got a lot of validation from. Right. So we thought, well, now that we're not in that role that they expect us to be in, are they going to be disappointed? Are we not going to mean the same thing to them? Right. And which is kind of really crappy on our part to automatically assume that about yeah. other people. No, and that's what I was going to say. Like, I, f I do feel a little bad that I was like, because I did tell Chi, I was like, I don't feel comfortable here. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't feel like I belong. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Whenever I seen all of them, and these are the guys who, again, are like r guys and, and gals that are like running, mm -hmm. you know, the Indiana district uh, for this religion are not just like, it's not like they were coming up and they're just like, it's so good to see you. You know, it wasn't anything like that. It was more of like, like huge smile on their face and mm -hmm. laughing and a couple of them would come up to me and they're like tell me about comedy man how's your comedy yeah. going and like they're so supportive like, actually very very yes. stoked that like i'm a st i'm following my mm -hmm. dream and like you know we did and we had some great conversations about god and and you know just spiritual stuff and then and, and then you know it was just like oh like these people get it like there are mm -hmm. people which is again that's why i hate generalizing things because right. whenever i'm like right. oh well they're they don't like me and well, stuff there, like there's that some it's like, people there's within... gonna be some of them that are are, are like that because i've had mm -hmm. messages from some of those people but they don't speak on behalf of all of the religion yeah and that's what i was gonna say there's certain people in within every religion every religion has people that you might classify as legalese okay, this is what our religion says, and you got to do this, or you're just not the right type of people. And then there's people that are, might be a part of the religion, but they're not necessarily religious. They're right. spiritual. And that, I think, is is what we got to kind of see. And that's what I was going to say. I, I love going to the services. I might not be um, as active 
in it. Mm-hmm. But I love being there during any kind of spirituality, you know, watching people come together for a common cause. And I mean, you can see that in all aspects of life. And again, not not to maybe alienate anyone. If you don't believe in spiritualism, just as the universe is, as a whole and, right. and energy as a whole, when you get a bunch of people together for a common cause, they're going to put out some kind of energy. Sure, yeah. Whether it's negative or positive. So being there at the campgrounds, I, I got to feel that positive energy. You know, if you go, um, if you're a part of, maybe some kind of marathon for a charitable cause, you're going to feel that good, positive energy. Yeah, yeah. And it, it kind of helps hype you up as a person. And uh, it's kind of weird that even though we're not, like, super involved, we still really enjoy going to church camp. And whenever we were kind of pulling out of being so um, religious, I did feel a little bit of sadness thinking, oh, we're probably not going to do the whole church camp thing. So this was good for me. And it's weird because a few years ago, um, I don't know at what point it happened, but uh, obviously at some point me and Jake kind of lost ourselves Mm -hmm. and we weren't true to ourselves, which is why we had to step back from a lot of things and say, are we doing this for other people? Are we doing this for us? And um, a few years ago... Well, like five, six years ago, we had this big issue amongst a bunch of our friends. And instead of saying, hey, we're not involved in this because we weren't, no one did anything to us. No one was mean to us. We asserted ourselves right in the middle. And then that caused me to feel some kind of way about a a few different people. So like two years ago up at the campgrounds, one of those people, I had to apologize to her. And I was like, look, that was none of my business. And I thought things about you that I shouldn't have thought. And I probably said things about you that I shouldn't have thought. Mm-hmm. But I had I had to step away from her for a few years. Well, now I have other friends that I've done the same thing to. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I got to see them at the campgrounds. And I just reached out to one of them and was like, hey, we, I need to sit down and talk because I've, I've done you wrong. Yeah. And I hate that I'm the type of person that I have to step away from people and sometimes it does take me time to kind of really look and be like, what did I do wrong? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's kind of the most important thing anytime there's a situation. We always want to be like, what did they do wrong and what should they do? Right. I think the very first thing you should do is say, okay, did I do something wrong? Or, what did I do? How could I have avoided this? Yeah. You and know? also, like, how how are how are my actions being felt by them Mm -hmm. because people feel in different ways Yes, so it's like or being perceived yeah you know you can say something like i have a very good friend uh who is a a, just a coarse dude Mm -hmm. like he's hard Mm -hmm. like everything he says is harsh and hard Mm -hmm. and um you can talk to him that way Mm-hmm. Like you can be, in fact, when he needs correction on something, mm-hmm. like if he is, you know, uh, has a task and he's doing it wrong, you can't be like super nice and cool with him about mm-hmm. it. You can be like, bro, you're not doing that right. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to be hard with him. Mm-hmm. And that's the only way to get through to him. So like, but if somebody was to talk to me the way that they talk to him, yeah, it would like, rub me the wrong yeah, way. So it's like too. people feel in different ways. Yeah. And I think if we can step out of ourselves for a second and not mm-hmm. say, well, that wouldn't have hurt my feelings, that right. wouldn't have offended me. Like, right. why would, why, why isn't it offending you? Or why are you upset about this? Mm-hmm. And I'm just saying that if you care about the person, if you don't care about the person, then whatever you're, yeah. why are you listening to a podcast yeah. about being blessed? <laughs> but like, you know, we're just trying to be good people or better people. Yeah. And it's like, we've, we've made mistakes over the last couple of years, especially whenever like we felt, um, you know, and we've talked about it on the podcast before. Like, we felt like we're losing ourselves. We're not liking the people that we're becoming, but also almost like we're we're getting defensive on all these we things. We projected and like, it onto other people as the yeah, problem. Like we, we almost yeah. made ourselves a victim in a situation where technically we weren't really victims. No. We were just in the wrong situation. Mm-hmm. And the feeling that we were getting from from it was, was like, oh, well, if I feel bad or if I feel like this is going wrong, then obviously somebody's doing something to me or right. I, or the way that this situation right. is being ran is wrong where it's like, no, <clears throat> the situation might not be wrong. It's just not the right situation for, for me. me. Yeah. But like other yeah, people. I'm on the wrong path. 
Other people might be getting great yeah. things from it, and that's totally yeah. cool, and that's, that's fine. Well, I think that was the situation with the, with the, a lot of my friends that this particular situation where instead of looking and being like, for, first I got way too involved in people's emotions. Instead of being the positive light, I, I kind of fed into it. And then at the time, I would act as if I wasn't feeding into it. Right. And now looking back, I'm like, oh, I totally was. That oh, was yeah. very high school of me. 100%. Um. But we but, wanted to make it feel like we wanted to feel like we weren't like oh well I'm I'm not that kind of person right but which we weren't and that's that was the issue is that we're not those kind of mm-hmm. people but then we're becoming those kind of people yeah. which means that we just need to remove ourselves from that situation yes yeah but uh, but I'm hoping to learn from this and hopefully you know I don't put myself in those situations or I correct myself a lot sooner I don't wait years you know I mean to sit there and say hey you know. The other day we were talking, and I just want to say I was really negative. I shouldn't have been a negative. Yeah. Pulling that, I'm sorry. I I should have been helping you find some positivity and things. You know, and that's that's cool because like I find myself doing that now. Do you good? Um, especially with like. <coughs> you do it me. with me. <laughs> yeah, well, with you for sure. I mean, I'll stop mid conversation with you, and I'll just be like, I'm being negative. Yeah. On and I need to stop. But like, there's a couple times, and it's hard sometimes because like, whenever you're confiding in people, it's hard to find that balance between like venting mm-hmm. and just being negative. Um, like I Grant Volkmar again. He's a, he's a great friend of mine. I love him to death. And there's been a couple times, like in comedy, where I feel like he's he's an ear for me. Like we can mm-hmm. we can kind of vent to each other. And sometimes I feel like I go a little too far whenever I'm talking about stuff, and it's like I become negative instead of just venting. It's like I'm feeding this negative cloud. Like there's this negative monster that I'm just like right. feeding and feeding and feeding. Yeah. And then I can I can almost feel Grant like start to close up a little bit yeah not that he's not and it's not his fault it's just like i'm going too far and then i'll either there stop Mm -hmm. and just be like oh bro i don't know what's happening right now yeah but more times than not like later i'll just text him and just be like dude i was so negative tonight and i don't know why Mm -hmm. i don't know where that came from and he's always super supportive and he's just like dude that happens to all of us sometimes but like I just don't want to be that guy. I want to be I want to be a positive yeah, energy I feel like in all things that I do. We could prevent those things. <clears throat> like if you work on your your daily meditation, um, w- whatever it is for you. Yeah. Um, particularly like I don't meditate like I should at all. Uh, I've been I had way too much screen time lately. I was there whenever I was rarely ever watching TV or on my phone and more involved in my books. Um. I wasn't as negative. Right. And it's because I was feeding my mind, and this is supposed to be our year of mind, and I've kind of been <coughs> starving my mind. And then it causes me I, I, to be more negative. And there's got to be something. I'm sure there's something something with that. No, well, not, it's, I not think just it's because spirituality. Like, there has to be some physiological thing. It's got to be with the fact of, like, our brains like like watching watching tv is like a passive thing Mm -hmm. like whenever we're spectators whenever we just like watch tv and stuff but But whenever it's active yeah when we Uh read and when we meditate and when we're we're being active in something we're actually working at something internally so that has to be it like i and i'm sure there's more to it but like we're not experts just disclaimer we're not experts. oh this this whole this whole show is just about me and my wife chia just like (laughs) trying to figure out our own stuff (laughs) and you guys are just along for the ride uh (coughs) more than more than anything this is for like our great grandkids to listen to later on and just be like grandma and grandpa were weird uh (laughs) they were into some weird stuff bro (laughs) um but what, what I was going to say, what I was finishing up with is that I think, you know, when you aren't doing those things that are good for your mental health and negativity, the things that are bothering you, the little things, they just build and build and build. And then when you have a listening ear, you word vomit everywhere. Yeah. Whereas if you were doing the things that you need to for your own personal mental health, whether it be, you know, your daily exercise, your mental health, reading, um, whatever it is that you do, if you had been doing that, maybe those little things that were bothering you, you would have already forgotten about. You would have been like, oh, or, or, or there's, you know, I've noticed there'll be times someone will say something to me and it'll rub me the wrong way. But if I'm working hard on my mental health, 
someone might say something, and then another friend will be like, they kind of give you attitude, huh? And I'll be like, oh, I didn't even notice. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Well, it's like we're just not, not on edge. We're not, negativity. yeah. Yeah, we're not on edge. Yeah. We don't have our guard up or anything like that. So, um, and also, like, that's another thing, go, circling back to the whole church camp thing. It would have been really easy for these guys to not have come up to me at all. Yeah. You know, because I'm sure that it, it, it I mean, maybe, I don't know. I, I would assume that it would have been different for them. They've not seen me since. Uh, I've done well, it's been I, at least two years because we didn't go to <laughs> yeah. church camp last so year. So it's been a couple of years, but like it was like nothing had changed. It was not a big deal. And like I'm obviously outwardly rebelling against <laughs> standards, you know. And well, no, I don't, I wouldn't say rebelling because rebelling makes it sound as if you're doing it because, yeah, of the and standards. that's and that's not you're at all. all just being like, well, I'm not a preacher, so I technically don't have these rules and i really don't like them anyways yeah like i'm, so I'm, I'm just going to back just to myself who i was before yeah i put on the uniform so it would have been very easy for them just to dismiss me being there or just smile and wave but like them coming up and showing support and being real about it and sh and and showing their true heart uh, really helped me along with my healing process on all of this. Yeah. Um, because Same. I've Same. been wanting, well, I've been wanting to talk about, you know, um, where you know, the fact that I was a minister and I did these things, I want to talk about that on stage, but it's still so fresh. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to come off like I'm belittling religion or if I'm slamming in, in, in any way yeah. or saying like, I'm better than religion I don't ever want to come off like that, even right. though I may not walk that path anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a great path for a lot of people, and it really oh, helped yeah. me in a lot of ways. So, like, I never want to come off like that, but, like, this healing process, I feel like, is helping me get to that point to where I think I'm going to be more and more comfortable now bringing it up more. Mm -hmm. Like, I actually brought it up tonight a little bit on, oh, really? uh, like, whenever I okay. started the show. And it was like in a nice way, like it was. It wasn't weird at all. Okay. <clears throat> I did. I talked about how I walked around church camp, sounded like Sling Blade, <laughs> which is not good. If some like random <laughs> dude walks up and he's just like, mm, "You guys know where they got all them snow cones at? <laughs> <laughs> Want to get me see, one of them milkshakes?" See, you trying to sound like Sling Blade right now is not working. Is not work. Like <laughs> I used to think you did a good impression, but yeah. now that. That you was a bad one, voice. but it's because my voice is messed up now. <laughs> I can do it if it's normal. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, we've not really, honestly, neither one of us have been reading. We've been very busy. No, well, don't. That's an excuse. Well, we can make time for reading. No, okay? you're right. You're right. You're we've right. been pouring into criminal minds a lot. Yeah. So. Okay. Hold on. Let's get into what we've been watching. <laughs> <laughs> what are we watching now? So I'm like ragging my brain trying to think if I've watched anything other than Criminal Minds lately. <laughs> so uh, as anyone who listened to the last episode knows, I've recently started for, I guess, my age caught up with me. And I'm now getting into like um, His crime stories, my, <laughs> my stories. And I've never liked any of this stuff. I've never liked she has watched Criminal Minds at least twice. I've never liked it. She's watched Bones. I've never liked it. She's watched CSI. She's watched all of those shows. Mm -hmm. You probably even watched Jag. I'm just <laughs> no, I didn't watch Jag. But I'm just saying. I'm like, not saying I want it. Yeah, she's watched all these shows, and I've never been into them. I've never no, liked it. Never to, wanted to. So I the, was actively against. Them. I was gonna say in the past few years, he's been nice about it. But there, for the first couple of years we were together, he'd walk in the room and be like, "Oh my gosh." I don't know how you watch this. Does that not bother you? Don't watch this with the kids in here. <laughs> this is creepy. It's weird. And I'd be like, I don't know. I just like seeing them get caught. Well, and then that's where I'm at now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I started. Well, I've, I've I started listening to a true crime podcast. I started listening to Crime Junkies, and I really, really liked it. It was just like one a random thing where it popped up where it's just like you might like this. And I listened to one episode and was hooked on it. I love it. And then you watch something else. And then I watched Bones with you. No, I felt like there was something else because we were watching. I was like, dude, if you like no, no, this. No, no, no. I, I forgot. I know what got it. I know what, what got me into it? it. It was whenever we were in, um, where were we? We were in like Tennessee or Alabama or something like that. 
and we watched that show that was about those boys. Oh, yeah, that's when, we, no, we were in Memphis, yeah. Memphis, and I really liked it, and that's, yeah. so that was, like, the beginning of it where I was like, oh, I know, but okay. there was something not too long ago <clears throat> I feel like we watched, and I was like, dude, if you like this, why don't you watch Criminal Mind? Ah, it'll bother yeah, me. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, really. <laughs> I just, I have no idea. I think you're just making stuff up. I'm not making cool. something up. You're just like trying to show that you know me, bro. That's what it is. You're just trying to like pretend. No, I like just want to at least I'm know doing. myself and remember what we were doing. Well, that also has to do with age. You know, you just you forget things. Um, but Criminal Minds, I'm on like season three now, and that's all I did while we were camping was mm-hmm. lay in the camper and watch that. That church camp. Yeah. Other than just walk around and creep everybody out. But um, You I, cooked a few times. Yeah, I cooked a lot. I yeah. cooked at, at least once or twice a day. Yeah. Um, I love camp cooking, though. I love it, too. I love when you Speaking cook. Speaking of camp cooking, I'm our kitchen is almost ready, oh, which yeah. means that uh, I will have a new YouTube show. Ooh. Uh, that will be out hopefully soon called yeah. crock pot and two smoking barrels yeah uh, where me and my good buddy grant volkmar will be uh cooking up a mess yes. uh, i will be cooking and um just doing some stories while i cook and we're gonna put on on youtube and it's gonna be it's gonna be fun i love it yeah so um criminal I minds i love it i love the you show you just like I'm watching so morgan kicking them doors you know morgan is so good looking <laughs> <laughs> and when he hikes his leg up like that, uh, I'm okay with it. I'm on board. <laughs> you know, like every now and then I just like, I'll just be looking at my door and I'm just like, if it kicks open, I hope it's Morgan. <laughs> you know? It's like. <laughs> How do you feel about Hotchner? Hotch is an a hole. But do you love him? I don't think so. Oh. I think I'm okay with it. I don't love him. I don't really? love him. Yeah. I'm okay with him though. Like, I'm. I'm He's very good at his job. I think he's a good boss, but, like, you don't love most bosses. You know what I mean? Like, he's got to be the way he is. Yeah. But he's just, like... I think he's a good he's boss. Not, I don't think he's understanding, though. Like, him, like, fighting with his wife about him working so much and everything, and he's just like, I need a little bit of support here. And I'm like, bro, you're you're never home. <laughs> like, I remember a couple episodes ago, you I were mean, just like, I'm watching my son Jack's first steps on, on this video. And it's like, I think she's supporting you, Hotch. Like, come on, Aaron. Like, get with the <laughs> maybe get with the program a little bit and uh, realize that your lady at home she needs a little bit of support. You know what I'm saying? And also, uh, here's just a little fun fact for everybody: his wife, he's married to his wife. She was on Dawson's Creek, and her name was Andy on Dawson's Creek. Yeah. And she had a brother, and her brother name was Jack. And if you watch Criminal Minds, her son's name is Jack. Coincidence? I don't think so. <laughs> You know, it's it's, and that's what people need to understand is that in oh Criminal my gosh, Minds, she and named Dawson it. was Dawson was in the show as well. He was in one of the episodes. What? But like people need to understand that Criminal Minds and Dawson's Creek is actually the same universe. <laughs> this is a continuation of Dawson's Creek because it never. Her name's uh, Haley, right? Yeah. Her name's Haley in the show. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't know this, but that was Andy's middle name in Dawson's Creek. Actually, Andy had some mental health problems. And so she's act because I made up the part that I said. <laughs> So now, so she yeah. has an alter ego, but she had to run away from everything. Yeah, and she misses her brother Jack, so she named her son Jack. Ugh. And that's a, it's the same it's the same world. So now here's a, here's the other thing. Gideon Gideon is um, just so good. Just I love Gideon that you is love just this like show. Gideon is just like he is a step grandpa. Mm-hmm. Like he's not a grandpa. Like he's yeah. not he's not caring and loving like a grandpa. Yeah. but he's like. He's caring and loving enough to be like, my grandpa's been dead for like 10 or 15 years, and grandma's sad and lonely, and, and Jason Gideon married her, <laughs> and he's making her happy, and they watch birds together, because he loves mockingbirds. He and loves birds all together. He loves birds, but mockingbirds are his favorite, um, <laughs> because mockingbirds actually helped uh, create language. And what I'm saying here is, <laughs> is that he's like... You're happy. Like, you go over to Grandma's house, and it's like, Gideon is there, and Grandma's making, like, biscuits and gravy, and Gideon's talking to you about, like, when, well, did you know that the first time that we ever ate bacon was in such and such year? And you're like, you're kind of boring, dude, but I also, I also <laughs> did really you, interesting. and you're really, really sweet, and you make Grandma happy. And then he wants to play chess with you. Yeah, and, but, you know, and that's fine. I know a guy who thinks that the word chess is chest. Really? I know a guy who thinks that chess is pronounced mm-hmm. chest and I, I had an argument with him for at least 35 minutes one time i was Did like you not google it i was like just google I, it. he never believes the googles i'll google really? it and show him 
Yeah, <laughs> I'll Google it and show him, and he never. He just. He's just like, uh, I don't know. Uh, but, but, I don't know. I'm like, bro, it's spelled C H E S S. It's chess, and he's like, no, it's chest because you keep it in a chest when you're not playing it. And I'm like, that's not no, accurate. No, you don't. I'm like, I'm like, sometimes it goes in a box. Sometimes it might go in a bag. Sometimes, sometimes it just, just leaves it on out. the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for really good players, they just leave it out. All right. So, um, <laughs> anyways, back to the show. Okay, yeah, who else? Oh, uh, okay. Okay, Spencer just, Reed. Wait. Here, no, 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 no. There's another fun thing. Here's another fun thing about Spencer Reed. I grew up with uh, someone named Spencer, <laughs> and she was a very good friend of mine. Yeah. And her brother's name is Reed. Yeah. Yeah, Spencer Reed. <laughs> this is just crazy. Who is your absolute favorite? On the show? Yes. Morgan. <laughs> like Morgan's Me my favorite. Me too. Uh, and for the same reasons, he's so hunky. Like I'm okay with it. You want him he, to call you baby boy? No, I'd rather even call me baby girl. <laughs> it's like baby boy just sounds weird, you know. I don't want him to change who he is, Chia. Yeah, that's uh, true. You know, <laughs> just looking for a good time. I like Garcia. She seems fun. I love her. Uh, I think she'd play D and D with us. Oh uh, yeah, I'm sure of it. So for sure. Yeah, it's just a fun. I don't. I didn't like L. Uh, no. I never really. I never. I like. I didn't dislike her, but I just didn't really care for her too much. Yeah. I just felt like um, her character just wasn't, like, deep enough, maybe. So I don't think it's her fault, like, the actress's fault. I think it was just the the character mm-hmm. itself I just never really cared for. And then uh, Emily, who's in the show now, who kind of, like, took her place, um, I'm, she's starting to grow on me a little bit, but, like, yeah. I didn't really care for her too much whenever she yeah. first came to the show. Um, who are we forgetting? JJ. Um, JJ, I like that JJ is now like a more prominent member of the team. Yeah. Because in the beginning, it was she was more of just like she assigns the cases, like she gets the cases she and stuff. She talks to the media. She talks to the media and everything. So like she wasn't like suiting up as much and going out. I yeah. feel like, or at least it wasn't well, one like of the first time she did that. It was a little rough. That's true. So that's yeah, Spencer's it's, fault. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great show. I really like it, and I'm, I'm, I'm ready for ten more seasons of it, yeah. which I have. Well, I'm super excited because for some odd reason, it only goes to season twelve on Netflix. So for years, I've been stopped there, but I guess apparently the last few seasons are on Hulu. So we will get to watch them together, hopefully. But I yeah. can see you binging them without me. Yeah, I don't care about you that much. <laughs> you know, it's like, I might just go ahead and watch them without you. Yeah, no, you wait. can't watch them before me. You can't this watch them before show. me. Either. Yes, I can. No, just wait, man. Come on, because I want to have fun with you. <laughs> then you watch. Then you have to wait with me. You can't cheat okay. on me. That's fine. All right, so that's don't what we've cheat. been. That's what we've been watching uh i do want to talk about one thing i want to talk about what we've been playing okay what games are we playing so we've not been playing a lot of games um for a while and i really want that to change uh i'm hoping that here soon we'll get back into board games a little bit because I know I keep looking at them I'm like I know so me too and there's so many of them that we haven't played I know like Race for the Galaxy I really want to get into Rune Wars uh, I've I really never played Planet out. of the Apes just so you know yeah it's, it's mm-hmm. so intimidating and then Descent has been sitting there forever mm-hmm. um, Pandemic Legacy we still haven't played Robinson Crusoe we still haven't played um, oh yeah yeah there's and there's another the Epic games we haven't played yet. Yeah, the tiny um, epic games. We got uh, X Men Munchkin. We haven't played yet. Oh man! We got an expansion to Caverna Cave versus Cave that we haven't played yet. We gotta play the other one again. Though. We need to play Legendary Encounters uh, again. more because yeah. I love that. We've not played the Joker, the Diabolical Party game. We've oh. not played the Lord of the Rings game. Like, there's so many of them, and those are just the ones I can see. <laughs> like, there's so many of them we haven't man, been playing. We're losers. Yeah, we need to get back into it. We're just. I feel like like. The last six to eight months, when we have an opportunity, one of us has either been like working a lot or on the road a lot to where it's like we just want to lay down. We're tired. Yeah, we're just tired right now. But we'll get we'll get everything back. It'll be okay. Sure, sure. Um, sure. but I want to talk about what I've been playing because I have been. So I played. Um, I think it was last week maybe. I played a Jurassic Park game. And I think you would love this game. Like where? On what? Uh, I, on a I, console? Yeah, I played it on the Xbox. Ugh. But it, but it might be the same game that you've been, you and Holden play. Oh really? Yeah. Is it like called? On our phones? Is it called like Jurassic Park Evolution or something? 
Uh, I don't even is remember. Is it like a city I... building game where like you yeah. build? Yeah. I've been playing that on the Xbox. Really? I'm really into it. Did I've you never... tell him that? Yeah. I've never liked these kind of games that much. I mean, I, I say that. That's not true. I like I liked SimCity a lot. A lot back in the day. I really loved SimCity. Age of Empires 3 was one of my favorite games I've ever played. So I guess I do like these kind of games. I just haven't played them for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but I it was a free download on the X, on Xbox Game Pass. So I checked it out. Mm-hmm. And it is such a nice game just to kind of relax and play. Like I was just listening to music and just playing the game for a few hours. Mm-hmm. And I really like it. So... I am going to play that a little bit more. So if you like world building games, like uh, it kind of reminds me of like, um, what is that park building game where like Roller Coaster Tycoon? I think that's it. Roller Coaster oh, Tycoon. Yeah. It reminds me of that. Like okay. you're literally building Jurassic Park. You're building your own um, dinosaurs and exhibits and all that stuff. You have to go out and like do research and you have to all uh, just fun stuff. It's, it's Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park is so much fun. So I actually think it's called Jurassic World Evolution. So yeah, so the one I used to play was Jurassic Park, and I don't know if that game just continued or what. I don't play it anymore, but hold and play Jurassic World. Yeah, that's what I that's what I've been yeah. playing, and I do dig it. And now the other thing I've been playing, and I just started playing it. So we've had uh, an arcade one up machine in our house for like two years now, mm-hmm. and. For whatever reason, it stopped working. <clears throat> I think our plug w- was bad. So I bought a new plug for it recently, and it hasn't worked for like a year. Mm-hmm. Like hey, longer than that. I think it only worked for like three or four months, and then it yeah. stopped working. Yeah. So I finally got a new plug for it, um, but it's still like I can only get it to come on like maybe 30% of the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on with it. So now we just are leaving it on. It's on now, and we just put it in demo mode, so it just like scrolls through its and just stays on. And I've been playing Gauntlet on that. Mm-hmm. Man, I love that game so much. It, yeah. And I shouldn't. It's not like an amazing game, mm-hmm. but I used to play that on the NES so much with mom. Oh yeah. Yeah, me and mom play oh, that game. I don't think a I've lot. ever played it. Oh, you. I think you would like it. And it's two players on that. Yeah. But but the kids have been playing it a lot. And now that it's on and I see the kids are playing it. And then like our niece and nephew and Chia's brother just stayed the night with us last night. And like his kids were playing it all day with our kids. Yeah. It's like, okay, it'll obviously, which, uh, yeah, it's an arcade. Obviously, people are going to want to play it. It's going to be right. fun. So I found where you can buy a mod for it. It's like three or four hundred dollars, and you basically, huh? Are we allowed to talk about that? Yeah, it's legal. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know if it was like some kind of piracy thing. I mean, I don't think so. It's pretty wildly. All right. It's all over YouTube and uh, all kinds of Googles and and whatnots. Well, I can Google how to murder someone too. That doesn't mean it's legal. It's why are you, why are you googling that? <laughs> Well, you don't I have mean, to Google it. Like I see it. On uh, Criminal Minds. Yeah, I've got three seasons of of how not to do it. Um, a couple of them ha- on how to do it. Yeah. Um. So, but the the cool thing is, so the the way this thing works is that basically I take out like the top part of like where the joystick and, and everything is. You take that whole top part out and you put a new one in. Plug it right in, and you have like every game, like every arcade game. It's a multi arcade. Like, you have all the arcade games, but then they also have all the Nintendo games and Sega games and 64 games and, like, all that stuff is on mm-hmm. there. And it's, like, three or 400 bucks. Mm. And I'm, like, yeah, I think I'll invest in oh, that. for that. Yeah, like, I almost said for the kids, but, like, I'm going to be, it's like, well, for you. Let's Don't go my, you lie. Let's go to my room now, kids. Don't you lie. But, uh, yeah, so that's what we've been playing. Uh, guys, I really hate to do this. Uh, I have to stop. My voice is killing me right now. I'm hungry. Yeah, Chase has got to eat some tacos. And, I don't know uh, if I want tacos. I don't know what I, I want. I want to watch I'm more hungry. Criminal Minds. You want to watch Criminal Minds? Yeah, so I love you guys very much. Um, before we go, though, we do want to say um, thank you to, to our Patreon supporters for everything that you guys do, you guys as always. Rock. Yeah, we really do love you. Um, and, and just uh, just appreciate what you guys do. So thank you for your support on there. Um if you want to help us out on Patreon, it's just patreon.com slash laugh and be blessed. 
but we we love we love them. And if you have not received a T-shirt and you're a Patreon supporter, um, and your tier is a tier four T-shirts, hit me up. Let yeah. me know. Um, we got I, some good ones. Yeah, I've been hand. I've I've been making. My mom made them for a while, and she did a great job with them. But she's very busy with an amazing life and a great job. And I I just like making them. So yeah. I kind of took over. So uh, I've been making them, and some of them have turned out like it's not just because it's my art. Oh, they're pretty dope. They're uh, amazing. So um, if you want a shirt, all you got to do is message me. Just go to jakerubel.com and click contact me. Message me that way. Or you can just contact me at uh, jakeandchia at gmail.com or through the Facebook um, group, Jake and Chia Rubles, Blessed Ones. So um, any of that stuff, just just hit us up and let us know. And if you listen to the show and you want a shirt, just hit me up and let me know. I got you. Can we lay in bed more often and do this? The first ep- the first episode that we ever did together, we were laying in our bed and we did it, and um, a lot of people <laughs> said that they liked it. Uh, we did the- we did it. <laughs> You're so stupid. You're so juvenile. <laughs> <laughs> just the way you said yeah. it. <laughs> the first episode we were laying in bed and we did it <laughs> uh no we were we, we did were... the podcast while laying in bed because i was like i ain't getting up for that and and since then we've had like a setup but our setup is currently down since we just went camping and took our table with us and never brought it back in our setup it's a card table <laughs> it's a nice table with good chairs well there's rain on it now i don't like the, the good I don't chairs like the tone. I don't lawn like the thing chairs. That you're saying. I don't I like lawn chairs <laughs> and I don't like how you're putting down our studio. Okay? Well, it's a big deal. We, we have sponsors like and we just think our sponsors. Do, can we record like this more often though? I'm really comfy. I could keep talking. Yeah. Well I'm I can't like, because I'm so my, yeah, tired. Yeah, I really can't. I mean I had a topic if you want to do the topic. No. Are you sure? Yeah. Because we'll I'll save do it. it. No, right, we'll, we'll save, save it. it. Okay, we're gonna save the topic for, for next time. So our topic was just like life today yeah we're just we talking at the about beginning things. yeah that also check the box of the mental health check-in and everything yeah, uh, yeah. so I, I think we're good all right so thank you guys very much we love you have a, a great week uh take care of your voice uh take care of yourselves and each other <laughs> and um just you know laugh and be blessed <laughs>